All right. How you doing, everybody? Vince, how you doing? How you doing, Coach Lyons? How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Um, something different for us, isn't it? This time of year, it's usually not uh, these kind of situations. Well, you know, I think we all know we're in a rather strange place right now, and uh, everybody's climbing up the walls, <laughs> trying to find a head a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bowl cuts out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. But no, we thought it was good to get on this phone, uh, on a, the chat and just, uh, you know, talk about basketball a little bit. Just talk about how we see things and, uh, you know, give the give our basketball fans a little bit of something to, to tune into, hopefully. Well, thank you for asking me on. I think it's a great idea. I think, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things to keep people busy uh, finding new ways to, to spread the love of the game, trying to stay in touch with everybody. Um, it is very odd because you kind of don't really know what to do. You don't know whether to prepare. You don't know whether to, to do anything. I mean, I, I talked to a number of my players and trying to keep them in shape. But how do you do that? Um, so it, it's, it's a rather odd one. Um, but obviously, it felt to me, I don't know how it felt to you, but it felt to me like March took like about five years to get by. <laughs> you know, now <laughs> April, just we're like, boom, we're at the end of April. It's, it's yeah. very odd, you know, so um, I think it's just about, you know, for us anyway, just talking to people, keeping everybody's yeah. spirits up and staying together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know in that month of March, I didn't, I checked the news probably three times a day, hoping so. <laughs> Never read the news so much in my life to see what's going on, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you need to leave that stuff alone because that will depress know. you, you know? It's, I know, I know. It's an overload, so much, you know? So much, yeah. So what, what, uh, what's it had effect on you? What, uh, what you've been doing with this, uh, this time in quarantine or self-isolation? Well, I mean, obviously the first couple of weeks, I guess it was quite, you know, in a way it was quite good to get a bit of a relax, you know, take it easy and, and, and you know, take things in. And then uh, then you find yourself waking up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon or, you know, thinking well, that's not quite right, going to bed at three in the morning. Um, so we slowly try to put a little bit of a rhythm together, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we try and do a bit of exercise, get on the bike if we can um you know do some interior interior decorating and stuff like this and looking for all those things you never had the time yeah. to do as a basketball person <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know um so but you, i think keeping the routine it was something that was important for us which we did you know with my family that's what we did um and then obviously trying to schedule calls with people i think the way the whole zoom thing and you know team yeah. meetings and all these little things have gone it's really been a, a plus you know and people have been able to stay in touch with each other so for me, it's been that rhythm, but as far as the club is concerned and the team is concerned, it's not really a lot you can do other than just talk, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you Definitely. guys? Similar stuff, but I mean, when it first happened, I came out the gates, I came out the block a little too quick. Um, I got a, a five-year-old <laughs> and I was like, okay, nine o'clock, we're waking up, 9.30, we're doing this, 10, we're doing <laughs> And then about three, four days, I was like, Let's uh, ease off that a little bit. We sleep in a little bit. <laughs> Maybe watch a little more TV for a little bit. You can play a little bit. Came out with the right intentions, but yeah, you're right. It's just trying to trying to keep a keep some form of um, routine. You know, waking up, doing some calisthenics and stuff like that. And uh, you know, as far as the players go, um, talking to them, reaching out, having conversations, seeing where their minds are. Um, just, just yeah. you know. Because, you, you know, you develop those different relationships, don't you, with each player as, as your years go on longer they've been with you. So it's good to keep that going. But I think everybody was all scrambled. You kind of let everybody just kind of have a moment, especially the American guys going home because yes, if they're yes. so worried about them, you know, you want to give them a little time just to kind of decompress and, and be at home, really. Um, yeah, I think that was the scary. That was kind of like a little scary. I mean, I don't know, for us down in, in London, we'd, we'd play the game. I think we played the game at Surrey the week before. So mm -hmm. we, we hadn't played for a week and then it was like, shall we, shan't we? And then all of a sudden, oh, so-and-so's gone, so-and-so's gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, as it happens, you know, it's only Brandon Peel from our side that's actually gone home. The rest of the guys are still here. The, the other oh, yeah. guys didn't want, to, they didn't want to go to the States. Um, we got Ali Tew from France. He didn't want to go to France, so, so he's still here. Um, so, you know, we check in regularly, make sure they're all feeling good. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, it, was a bit, it was a bit strange, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's uh, but hopefully, you know, we come out the other side of this and the plus side is like the things you said, you, you know, you do things you don't normally do. You pay attention to certain things and, um, you know, people focus is in better places in their life when we get out of the quarantine, hopefully. 
Yeah, you hope so because you do have time. You know, like I mean, uh, you know, and I mean that from a basketball perspective per se. I mean, obviously, playing why you know, coaching wise, and then you know, my role within the club and stuff, it, it kind of never stops, and you, there's so much pressure on, and then you don't get a chance to really think about other things and and, and take a time to just chill. And 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 you know, those first couple of weeks, I think, were, were really really quite helpful. I think it's getting a bit over serious now because I'm now trying to go back and watch all the Marvel movies in the right order. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff we got, I got to catch up on. It's, just, it's, it's scary, really, when I'm start, trying to click through too many things to pick from. It's narrowing, though. It's narrowing. Every week we're in this, it's narrowing. I'm not going to Yes, that. yes, well, that's it. That's it. Now, I tell you, I mean, um, what do you call it? I watched, uh, what did we watch the other night? Uh, Ray, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the movie, which came out in 2005. So I've been waiting 15 years to watch it. <laughs> And I finally watched. I'm like, why did I watch this movie when it came out? <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie too. <laughs> that's a great movie, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um, just reflecting more on uh, the season from last year, how did everything go in, in your mind? Like, we, we this is another thing that's nice. We can actually talk about things really fresh because usually we'd be on to the next one by this time. Yeah, we might run yeah. into each other talk and it's not too deep, but if you have a little time, what, what, what is your reflection upon last season? What do you feel like uh, yourself? How did it go? And, and plus Well, it? it was interesting. I mean, it, it was interesting. I think, you know, I'll start off by saying, you know, we kind of got roughly to where we wanted to get to by the end, mm -hmm. but it was a long way around getting there. It was a strange uh, start to the season. The off season last year was tough because we just won the league. You know, you got all the guys, you know, that team that we won the league with was a team that had been together for some time, you know, yeah. and really had an unbelievable chemistry, you know, probably the best chemistry of any team that I've been on. And, um, but unfortunately, we weren't able to bring everybody back. We thought we wanted to get better in certain areas. You know, some decisions we made were probably right and some decisions we made were probably wrong. Um, and um, then, of course, the schedule. You know, I know we all we all talked about the schedule and what that would mean in terms of the cup uh, and the reduced games in the league. What it meant now is you almost couldn't afford to lose a league game, no. you know, with such a short schedule. So, I mean, it, it, it kind of looks like we intentionally didn't put the team together on time, but we were trying to. Uh, it wasn't that it wasn't that we were planning anything per se. We were trying to put the team together. So kind of a little disappointed with with the way we got together uh, at the start of the season. You know, and then we scrambled through to the to the um, the All Stars uh, thing and, and got that. And I, I don't know how, but you know that's just the way that went. Um, so I wasn't happy with the way we were going. I felt there were glimpses there, and I thought the guys that we brought back were trying really hard to recreate yeah. what we had. You know, whereas maybe we just had to put all that to one side and start off as a fresh sure. team. You know, but then, you know, and then obviously OV joined us, which was just incredible for the club and incredible for the league. Um, you know, a really amazing guy, amazing player. Um, but then again, that itself then put us slightly to the left because we had to now learn how to play with him and, and his, his situation. Um, so it was tough, but I felt, you know, to the credit of guys like Justin and Joe in particular, you know, we got ourselves back on track. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I think we felt comfortable going down the stretch of these last four or five games. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a strange roller coaster type for us. Yeah. Yeah. I found for us, um, we came out the blocks really fast in the cup. Oh, yeah. Um, we did really <laughs> well in the cup, but that kind of masked some, some issues with, we had with, you know, injuries. And so when we came to the regular season, different teams kind of, probably geared up a little bit, especially in the North, they geared up because they played us so much. They could, they, they had made changes yeah, and they yeah. saw where the holes were and we were still get, coming off injuries with Boona who never really quite got going until probably right before all this kind of kicked off. Um, and we weren't deep already. So every kind of position we recruit is important to the whole puzzle. Um, and we had a big, we had, we had a bit of a slump where we lost three, I think two or three in a row. And then we got our heads back into it and, people sort of binding their roles. And so for me, it was, it was kind of, I, I didn't know how it would go uh, later in the season, but I felt confident in it. You know, I felt like we got ourselves out of that bit of a slump, which sometimes, you know, as a coach is the best thing that you have that slump mid season. Early. Yes. And if you stick with the same guys, a lot of times it pays benefit, it pays dividends down the stretch because, you know, you've lost together and it's easier to, when you start winning to know yeah. when not to go back. Correct. Before Correct. Guys that had lost a little bit recovered. And they were all binding the role and getting tougher. So um, that's kind of how I felt for for the Sharks here. Um, 
I, I mean, I thought two things about your team that I thought was, was great. I mean, I thought, first of all, I, I, you know, I love the way that, that Nick Lewis was able to come back and integrate, you know, into the league, you know, I, I don't want to say kind of missing a beat, but I thought, he was, you know, he was better than he was when he was here previously. He, he mm -hmm. was a real asset and, and some teams had a real problem dealing with him clearly. I mean, we had to pay special attention to him every time we saw him. Um, you know, so I thought that was a huge plus on that front. Um, but I also thought, you know, in, in as much as you were a shortened rost roster, I thought that the guys really knew how to win. You know, mm -hmm. I thought you were in a lot of games there and you just came through and won it. You know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I was watching that really closely thinking, wow, you don't want to get down to the last couple of minutes because they know how to win. Yeah. And I think, I think that's true. I think we had enough guys that returned and been around for years to, to as you know, buy into me and in, in those late game situations to just buy into whatever I was saying in those huddles and the order we drew up um, with Tuck and then Mackie has been there a couple of years. So that yeah. kind of helps other teams. Maybe they're still trying to get those, those um, down the stretch moments. And you guys have that. We've played, we played you tight and you guys, Turned on us a little bit, put the Jets on, um, you know, Justin doing what he does and hitting big shots. And, you know, we schemed up well and you guys still made play after play and defensively you beat us up like you like to do. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin something else. But, but, hey, I think, you know, I've been around a long time and I've been on plenty of losing teams, I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's learning about how to win and, 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 um, and once you've got that, that's something you have to really protect like gold. You know, it's the key to everything, I think. Yeah, and one yeah. thing I like really liked about this team this season was practice was easy in the sense of I went in, whatever I put down, whatever you talked about, they did it, no complaining, no, you know, and that makes the season, you know, yeah. fun. Yeah. And for for a coach, that's the only thing you really ask yeah. for. Just, <laughs> just do that. This is all I want. You know, I know I'm not, you know, you're going to be happy with certain things, but just come to practice and show up and want to be here and, and, and compete. And I think people from the outside think that's a given, but you know, every team oh, you know, no. <laughs> dragging <laughs> three, four insane. guys in, they don't want, and we practice in the morning a lot of times. We practice early morning. So I don't know when you right. practice. So yeah, sometimes we practice in the mornings. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's you know. a bit of a kick in the teeth for, for guys that don't like that. But this year we had a good group of guys. And I think that was for me, one of the most enjoyable things that the whole group was just easy and, and, and hard working at the same time. Well, I mean, it's about 182 to 200 practices. You know, mm -hmm. depending on, on what you're doing. And, um, you know, the last thing you want for, for that to be a drudge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long season when it is, right? You got those one or two guys that you need to show up to practice. They just never quite, you know, you might get 75 of those 180 days. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> um, so let's look, look a little bit around the league and, and performances. Who was the teams that kind of uh, shocked you? Who was the team, in, in a good or bad way, who gave you kind sure. of a surprise this season of, you know, you didn't know going in what, what to expect? Well, I, I thought it was an exciting season, and I thought going into it without seeing anybody, I thought that um, there was going to be a lot of surprises. You know, I think we had a, an interesting bunch of situations. Um, just looking at coaches, you know, I felt like PJ was going to settle down. You felt like... Um, Coach Lavinia in in, um, in Glasgow was going to settle down. You felt the riders were going to come back with a response. Um, so, you, you know, you were like, okay, you know, this is going to be interesting. So, but when you got down to it and you look at it, I think I, I kind of picked out two teams that I thought, you know, really stepped up. Um, I think, first of all, Worcester. You know, I thought that Coach Matt Newby probably had the best recruiting class of, of all the teams. Yeah. Uh, he dug up some unbelievable gems. Um, I love the way he put that around, you know, three core British guys in uh, Jordan Williams and Kofi Josephs and, and Raheem May Thompson. I thought that was amazing because I gave you that. First of all, it gave the club, I thought it gave the club a culture and a character that they didn't have before. Yeah. Um, and then when the Americans and foreign players come in, to pick up from those guys is vital, as we always know. Um, but they had guys there to help them along, along that route. So, you know, and then obviously the kind of cherry on the top in terms of um, Amir Williams when he joined them. Yeah. I thought they were a formidable, formidable outfit, uh, and I thought they they really stepped to the plate. So they would be my my team that really came 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 for it. Um, and in Glasgow, I and mean, I felt like Coach Lavinia, you know, Lavender had, you know, had a taste of it the season before coming halfway through. Again, you have those veterans, you know, in Fraser and Murray and so on. Um, so I I thought they, they those those were the two that that impressed me the most for the season. You know, yeah. I have to say I agree with you when. Um... Both those teams really. Worcester, um, we we played them twice, 
uh, we split, but the first time we, we played really well and, and you know, people struggle a little bit in our venue. We, we had a good home record, but um, the way they moved the ball, the, the balance, um, you know, you didn't, you, you couldn't really tell who the Americans were at times, which is when you have a really good team. Yes, well. yes. You know, no one's, the Eagles are probably pretty much in check and no one's out there trying to get theirs and I got to do this and I got to do that. And you could see that from, from the first time we saw them. And, and I also went to the finals in the cup and they played uh, a fantastic yeah. game despite not probably fantastic. playing their best game. But they, it was, uh, they, they turned it on down the stretch, which showed their class. And like you said, showed the strong recruitment of Matt Newby. Yeah. Um, Glasgow for me was one of the tough ones because we played them so much in the cup and we beat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they yep, came, yep. they made a couple of changes and they- Wow, they, had, they were huge changes. <laughs> yeah, and they, they made some changes and they came out and they really, they brought it to us when we played them in the league. Um, I think we had them one more time, but um, yeah, he did a good job. They were deep, they were deep, big, uh, shot the ball well. Um, he, he had a he he had the stagger screen offense he kind of did to start in the cup. That's right, that's and he right. changed it when the season started. He kind yep, of he did. flipped to he a did. whole different kind of uh, uh, offense, which helped him a lot, I think. And um, they all really and I think the firepower. Them. I think those two guys brought firepower as much yeah. as anything else on competitive level. You know, which meant you didn't have to rely necessarily. You know, actually helped Fraser blossom. I thought. Yeah, yeah, and they both shot the ball well too when they got here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so I thought that was that was right. And then, in terms of who maybe didn't step up to par, you know, I, I mentioned PJ earlier, and obviously, you know, good friend of mine, PJ. We go back, you know, a long, long time. But I, I was really thinking that you know he, he was making some changes there um, earlier on, you know, in preseason, and I, I was looking forward to that, especially anchoring them around Rashad and uh, and Josh Wiltshire. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know they had a, a number of injuries that probably held them back. But they were a team that I was hope, hoping and expecting to see, you know, really challenging. So they kind of fell a little short. I know, I know they, you know, obviously they made a bunch of changes later on down the straight, stretch with the new owners and everything. But we didn't really get a chance to see to see that, you know. Thankfully, because after that point guard they saw, I saw the one game he played. Oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> he was going to cause problems. <laughs> um, and and funny enough, you, you know, Manchester, you know, because mm -hmm. after what had happened last year, I thought they got a taste for something. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and you know, Coach Byrne, you know, kind of went left field with his recruiting and got some guys in there that you didn't think they could get there. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would lead the way to something new. And and you know, obviously that kind of dropped off again. But you know, we know that going forward, they've got some new ownership in there, some yeah. stuff going on, and and they'll be back because you know, Coach is, is you know he's he's coming along, needs some bounce. Yeah, I mean, I think like you said, the year before the recruitment, he had he headed out the park with a couple of those the points, big Clayton. Um, and you this know. year, when he didn't probably get the same kind of level he wanted to or whatever, he still made adjustments and coached, coached them well and, and pushed them yes. to the edge. Very um, much so. Very much to, so. Credit to him, yeah. You know. Um, I was, I was, we played Newcastle a bit and um, they, they won a the trophy, um, but I felt like they, when we played them, they never quite got all the firepower finding the right time at the same time. They were a very, very talented team. They knocked us out of the trophy, so not to say they weren't good. And they were the top sure. three or four. But um, I feel like I didn't know where they were going to go. That was a team I was curious to see how they would finish the season out because yeah, Fletcher, um, Gettys, uh, very, very tough to, to play for, as you know. Um, yeah, it was, so it was, was a strange one. That was headed. Strange one. Uh, sorry? Can you hear me? You've frozen a bit. I don't know if I'm still oh, coming through. Sorry, I got oh, you now. There you go. Yeah. Okay. No, no, coming back to that, you're right. But then I think it was, you know, credit to the organization. It was always going to be tough. I mean, to lose mm -hmm. Fab, you yeah. know, yeah. you know, and I think to, well, to lose Fab would have been bad enough, but to not know, is he, isn't he, is he, isn't he? And I think there was a yeah, period yeah. there where it was kind of hanging. Um, I think that that was just huge. Can you just, I mean, that's like having the heart ripped out of, the situation, you know, and that was always going to be tough for, for, for Paul Blake, the ownership, and for and for Ian, the coach. So, you know, uh, and then obviously now it's like, oh, uh, yeah, so yeah. that kind of and thing. And they won a trophy. And they won a trophy. And they won a trophy, exactly. That and, and, made that, you know? yeah. and I mean, I'm trying to remember because, again, like, we didn't see the teams in the North for a long time. So I mm -hmm. think Gettys came late. Am I right? I mean, yeah, he, he did, didn't start did. right. So, you know, Gettys came late. They made the adjustment, yeah. you know. And, That's and what they, I mean. I was curious to watch <laughs> him going down the stretch. Like, as if they, with him in, I was like they keep putting this thing together and they, they're gonna be yes be very formidable because they 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 like they won a trophy they were a silverware championship team but they never really actually put it together it was just talent that kind of got yes. in there. 
Um, yes, absolutely. So, so I think considering those those kind of situations, I thought they would just come into the ball nicely and you know and and, and, and all that. So it's going to be interesting to see going forward because obviously they're going to have to to you know now bed that re- reinvention, if you like, of themselves going forward. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I think that I think that was a good shout there, Newcastle, because you know you know for sure the infrastructure is there and everything else is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What about um? Let's look a little bit more individually. Who who are some of those the top players in the, in the league to you outside of London Lions guys? Yeah, well, that was an interesting one, and I, <clears throat> I had to make some notes because it, you know some <laughs> so, some. Uh, some of those matchups there were tough to separate. So if I start with the point guards, I mean, I thought we had a lot of point guards in the league this year that were high level. Mm-hmm. You know, I really, I really, really thought we did. You know, um, we had guys coming back. We had some sensational new guys. You know, um, it was tough. I thought that, um, I thought Greg Pryor did really well for Glasgow. I mean, I was watching him last season thinking this guy has got a high reputation, you know, you know, as of last season, he wasn't performing. And then he was one of the guys that they signed to come back when they signed those guys mid season. Yeah. Uh, and I thought he really drove the team well this year. So he was in contention there. Um, I thought um, uh, PJC at, uh, at Cheshire, yeah. you know, came yeah. along. We knew he had talent. Um, he was frail. He was small, but he had bags of talent and it certainly had a huge heart and his yeah. numbers were off the charts. Um, and I'm, I probably would have put him up there as, as my point guard position, but for the fact that, you know, I felt like Fletcher in the end, you know, grabbed Newcastle by the, by the scruff of the neck, you know? Yeah. So, you know, for me at the point guard position, I'm going to put Fletcher in there. Yeah. I think you're right. Cart, Cartwright got better and better. PJ, uh, PJC got better and better. You could tell he's getting his footing in the league as he went. When we, cause we played him early and then we played him again later and he was a whole different po- player. He was yes. aggressive. He was, you know, he was aggressive in spurts in the start of the start of the season. He kind of could tell he kind of clipped it on and, and figured out what he wanted to do and how he wanted to play. And the team got much better for that. Um, sort of hit yeah, that and he wasn't taking as uh, he wasn't taking as many chances. I thought he was taking a lot of chances um, earlier on in the season. You know, foul mm-hmm. trouble. And he was having to sit. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of think in that Newcastle semi final, I thought he didn't he sit for a whole bunch of time yeah. after picking up three fouls in the first or second quarter. So you, you know. I, he was beginning to slowly get better at, at, at doing yeah. that, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, he was a nice talent to see in the league. I mean, you always got, you know, guys from my from my point of view, Justin, Justin Robinson. He's, I, I love his his demeanor, his um, his temperament on the court. Very, very calm. Very, you know, never very steady. Doesn't really change. I don't know what he's like in the huddle, or off the court, but on the court, you don't see much emotion. Um, he plays through things. Uh, communicating when it's tight, you know, those kind of things and hits big shots. So he's always up there in my book. Oh, you know, he is. I mean, and, and that's, that's how he is off the floor. You know, he, he mm. you know, first of all, he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking at any time of the day. And uh, he is what you see. There's not no side to Justin whatsoever, but his work ethic is just off the charts. You know, um, as far as a consumer professional that I've ever worked with, he's the best, you know, mm. without a close second, because, you know, his determination, his hard work. I mean, he's the fittest guy on the squad. You yeah. know, when we go, when we do our preseason stuff, you know, uh, you know, he's the fittest guy we've ever had on this club. Uh, and, and, you know, he does it with gusto, you yeah. know. Um, and he's the kind of guy he wants to practice all the time. You know, we've got to practice before every game. We've got to do this, we've got to do that. You know, he, he's, he's, he's incredible, you know. And, and you know, he's... We often we laugh and joke around him about looking for pictures of him showing emotion. You know, we struggle to find <laughs> <laughs> whether it's up or down. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I caught him a couple of times giving it to rest a little bit. You can see he didn't like oh, some yeah. of those calls, but um... <laughs> <laughs> because you know when he was in Greece, um, because you know one of the great players that we had at the club some years back was Demarius Bowles. You know when we had, mm-hmm. when we were at Milton Keynes and they played against each other in. Uh, okay. In Greece, and the Maris always used to tell me. I, I said, "Oh, we got an English kid over there." So, oh man, this kid is tough, you know. When I told yeah. Justin about that, he was laughing. But you know, in Greece, the biggest thing for him was getting to the line. You right. know, he was he was always in all his time is in Greece. He was always number one or two at getting to the line. You know, and wow. once and stuff. And he just he just couldn't get those kind of particular yeah. calls. You know, they weren't calling that. Yeah. I remember that when I came came to uh, England for the first time as a player, and I used to shoot six, eight free throws, and all of a sudden I'm like, hold on, <laughs> what's going on? Here? 
different, different kind of different game everywhere you play. Every country's a little bit different. Yeah, every, and you have to adjust. You know, you have to yeah. adjust. <laughs> you, you did mention Fletcher, which I agree, but also uh, we talked about a little bit ago Cortez Edwards from from Worcester. Well, that's interesting because I'm going to come to Cortez because you have to ask a question: What is he? Is he a one or is he a two? You know, um, and when you watch the way Matt coaches the team, you know, obviously sometimes he flips and flops yeah. with Boutnett uh, at the one and. Cortez Edwards is a high-level player. You know, like I yes. say, I was going to come back to him because he's in my shout for the for the two guard position. Okay, you know? all right. I'll let you. I'll let you have that. Then we'll come back to that. So let's pick but up. But obviously, McKnight. You know, we talked about McKnight. You know, he. Um, I mean, obviously, he had to miss some games when he went. You know, sadly, went back through the bereavement and stuff. You know, I think that's a guy. Obviously, we've been watching here now for a couple of years with you guys, and that's a guy that's really maturing very, very well. I think you know, as time goes by, he's just getting better and better. Yeah, I think that's the key word. He's definitely maturing now. He's starting to starting to get it. You know, every player gets gets that point where they get it. You probably have that with Justin. Now. He's a little bit older, um, and some of the noise fades away from him. They just kind of understand the role, the job. Yeah, um, yeah. lose a little bit of emotion, the emotion side that's negative, and just yeah. keep it more. And, and I Correct. think that's where Mackie turned that corner this year. Um, you know, when he wasn't there, we missed him. He's a, he's he's the leader yeah. of the team. Yeah. He brings energy, defense. He's tough, uh, scrappy. Uh, great voice in the locker room on the court. So, yeah, he was, he was, uh, he's, he's big for us. And I think now you can see in a mature point guard, you'll see a different Mackie come out. Yeah, definitely, definitely noticed that this year. Yeah. You know, yeah. Def- he worked a lot in the summer, shot, was hitting the shot more consistently, getting more confident in it. So uh, he has a command, me- uh, mechanics, just has to, just has to let it go. So, of course, of course, yeah. of course, you know. Okay, so we go to the two guards now. Two this, guards. Is an, this is an interesting one. You know, because um, we, we talked about Cortez Edwards. Um, and I say that because, you know, sometimes he would start the one, sometimes he'd start at the two, depending on what Coach Matt was doing. Um, and then sometimes he would start Kofi Josephs at the two, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I think he, you know, he's definitely one of the shouts there at that, at that two guard uh, position. Then Neymon Wright at, uh, at Leicester, you know, he's a smooth operator, uh, 16 points a game. Um, I thought he won a bunch of games for Leicester and Coach Rob. You know, I thought he, he did a really good job there. Um, but I'm going to lean to Cortez Edwards as my two spot. You know, okay. and the reason being, you know, his numbers, whatever they asked him to do, he would do it. But he's, he's averaging, um, I think he's averaging 12, 6, and 6. You know, and flirted with triple double so many times. Yeah. He's always a problem on the glass. You, you know, you think you block box everybody else out, and here he comes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I think he, um, he's sleepy, athletic, doesn't he? But he's all cerebral. So when you mix that too, he, he makes three yeah. pass and land. He's in the right spots. Yeah, and he, he's got some long arms. Long arm, yeah. You know, he's got some really long arms. You know, and um, you know, going back to look at his pedigree, you know, he came from a really good pedigree. So, so yeah. So for me, I'm putting him next to next to Fletcher. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I see that. I can see that. Uh, right for me from Leicester. Um, yeah, he was he was when I was I wasn't sure about I didn't know much about him. I watched a little film when I saw him sign him and, and when I saw him play live, he was much better than I expected yes. him to be in his film. Yes. Um, yes. maybe it's just, you know, sometimes guys need that more room to grow and, and, and do different things and evolve. And he le- definitely took advantage of it in Leicester. You know, he, he was he was a shot the heck out of the ball and yep. just make plays. Absolutely. Really and I think, you know, going into a team, a successful team like that, that's always a difficult adjust. Mm. You know, mm. I, I give him credit for that. You know, it's a, it's a tough situation to go into. Someone we haven't really mentioned, I don't know where you put him because he's, he's almost like an Edwards, I guess, Gentry from Bristol. Yeah, yeah. You know, now, and I was going to mention him in terms of the long arms with, with Cortez and also the problem that he causes you, you know, in terms of, for him, you know, he's a, he's a problem on the glass, uh, defensively mm. on the glass, you know. The only question mark I had around that was, you know, his ability to stay out of foul trouble. Yeah. I think this is it when you, when you know, we talked about it with PJC, you know, you, you have to be able to stay out of trouble, especially the more of a key player you are on a team, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, it's no secret, you know, when every time we played Bristol, we targeted him. You know, we mm-hmm. made him have to mm-hmm. guard. And whoever, you know, we always took it in turns to see who they would try, you know, who they would try and hide him on. You know, and whoever they went to, that's where we went. Whoever they went to, that's where we And, you know, he must have spent half the time we played against him on the bench, you know, because mm-hmm. of that. And, and for me, that was the thing. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the, um, the cup final uh, um, with Worcester and, and Bristol. And I thought that there was a phase in there where, you know, I have this theory that sometimes it's the coaches that foul the players out. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, sometimes the guy gets the 
three fouls, or he gets to four fouls, oh, I better rest him, you know. And then you rest him and you think, well, there's eight minutes to go. Let me wait for another two before I bring him in. So now he's sat down for nine minutes yeah. and you bring yeah. him in and he picks up the fifth and he's out of there. You know, yeah. I feel that kind of situation caught him out a number of times, you know. Right. And sometimes you're going to have to say, you know what, I think you got four more minutes in there and I'm going to play it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, if you, it depends where you're on the game, if you control the game, if you, if you feel you have nothing to lose. It's all those different accounts. It's never easy to make in that call sometimes, but no. It's got to no. follow that gut, don't you? And you got another player. If he's a guy that can't handle or can't handle. That's right. That's like right. You said yeah. hide him. <laughs> yeah, hide him. <laughs> you know, right. and, and that, I mean, obviously, Worcester had led for most of that game in, uh, in the cup final. And then you knew there was going to be a run somewhere along the line. Bristol were going to come back with a run. And they came back with kind of like a mini run and they were there. And then, and then the foul happened. And then there was, uh, before you knew it, it was gone. You know, mm. I just felt there was a time there. But, but yeah, I think. When I look at foul, when I look at players, I, I look at their fouls significantly because that, to me, is you know subject to coach's decision to put you on the floor. That's the only thing that can keep you off the floor. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah, a nice player, nice player. Good point. So let's go. Let's go. Uh, three men. Well, you know, this might be a, a a spot where we're not as strong maybe in the league as we thought because no, yeah, you know, when I looked at the the breakdown, I was thinking, wow, this is a spot that, um, you know, people could get into. So I, I'm stuck with two guys right now. Um, the one guy I think should take the spot is Marcel from Newcastle. Okay. Now, if you, if you ask me to, to talk about him without looking at his numbers, I'd say that he wasn't as consistent as he could have been and he didn't settle down. And sometimes you're a little hot headed here and mm -hmm. there. But then, you know, you look at his numbers and he's, you know, he's 15 and four. The four is a little low. He should be a bit more, but he's shooting 52% from the floor, 40% from the three. That's serious numbers, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and he's, he's, in, he's a transition player. He gets up and down the floor. So he kind of like was the leading candidate. Then I was trying to see who else I could put in there. And, and, I, and I, you know, <clears throat> I looked at Leicester like you always do. And, and, and I like the contribution that, um, that Jamal Anderson always makes, you know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, what's scary for us is, you know, uh, Joshua Hibbert is almost mirroring Jamal's numbers. So we've got another serious problem brewing <laughs> in the Midlands. But then I looked at Gareth Murray. Yeah. You know, especially with the resurgence with, uh, with, with the rocks and stuff. And I think, you know, he's 10 points a game, nearly four rebounds. So it's nearly the same as Marcel, but he's shooting 71% from the floor. Mm. You know, so he was there in, in, in contention. So uh, then I thought, okay, who did Worcester bring in that spot? And I thought Wor Worcester kind of flopped around a little bit in that spot. So, uh, you know, so that's to me, was one of the weak spots I spotted in the league. So, but just looking at those numbers, I ended up giving it to Marcel as, as the three man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. I think, I think Murray, um, you know, the guy seems like he's, uh, he kind of hit a little bit. I wouldn't say hit as far as talent wise, but taking the team and leading or whether he was outshined by, having someone like a char around him who had more, you know, presence yes. as far as GB yes. and stuff. And now when I see him, he looks, he's, he's, he's old anyways, but he just seems like he's, he's figured it out, figured out how he wants to play. He figured out his spots. He, he takes the shots he wants to take. I think he used to, he probably took poor shots a few years ago. Yeah. He would probably force a little bit, but now he's playing a little more on, on, under control within himself. And so the shots you get, he's getting are high Good quality ones. shots. And yeah. He's, and he's, he's probably a better shooter than he was a couple of years ago. He's probably put a lot yeah. of work in. Yeah. So I yeah. would agree with you there. Um, the three man, the three spot is a bit where Josh would hit it to me. He, he kills us uh, with his activity when we play him. He's just active. Uh, not so bad. active. Um, he's a, he's a undersized to me, if anything, but he, he's physical. He mixes it up. He's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder to go after it and get it. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think he, if, he, if he gets his three point shot developed further as he's going along, then yeah, that yeah. is really going to bring him out. You know, late, late bloomer, maybe a little bit there with that. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Is, it is a strange, uh, strange role. You got someone like Teo, Siri? Yes, and, and, and he's there. I think, you know, Teo, you know, I, I love Teo. I, I, I love, I really love playing, you know, coaching him, you know, his effort and everything else and, 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 and so on. You know, I think he's a real, you know, shining light for a lot of British guys that you can do that. You know, not everybody has to go to the States. You can just work hard and be successful. Yeah. Um, I think he kind of got caught not caught, uh, he kind of got, um, he ended up having to play this role of, of leader of the team over the last two or three years. Whereas mm -hmm. really, I thought if he had had a couple, 
uh, oops, am I, am I there? Yeah. If, if he had, had a couple more weapons with him on that, uh, on those teams, you know, he would have even gone to a higher level. Yeah. You know, so I think sometimes he was needed to play at the four. Sometimes he was needed to help them with some ball handling. Sometimes he was needed to do this. You still need me to score because we know he can score in bucketfuls. Yeah. You know, so I think he got caught with, you know, yeah. because he's so good at so many different things, he's been asked to do different things. Different you know, I think things, yeah. if he'd have been just straight up in that position, he'd be a problem. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Good point. You know. Okay. So one of the probably a strong position for the league is that four. Yeah, now <laughs> that that's a that's a really 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 strong position. I thought, you know, mm -hmm. looking around, and um, you know, I thought there's a lot of really really good guys in there. But um, I mean, we talked about the new guys at um, at Glasgow, Vincent. Yeah, you know, like he, he, oh like my goodness, he gave it to you inside and outside, however you wanted it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and and turned that around. So I thought he was a great acquisition. Yeah. Um, so he he was one of the leading lights for me in that position. Uh, yeah, um, but you know where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to Jamal Williams. Uh, uh, jo I'm sorry, Jordan Williams. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, you know, he's a young fella. You know, he's been around a long while. But he's a young guy. Yeah, mm. And I'm not sure that anybody found a way to stop him this season. No. You know, um, the only person that stops him is himself. Mm -hmm. Because when he's in that block, he's a problem. You yeah. know, he's got the size. He's got the weight. He's got the patience. He's got the touch. He's very, very happy to pass. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we saw him, was it um, last year's All-Stars that they won? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where he was dropping dimes all coast. over the place, dunking yeah, the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah go, you know, yeah. all of those skills. Um, <clears throat> so I felt like he was a guy that I never saw a team that found a way to stop him when he was in the mood to play. Mm. You know, so so for me, he gets that fourth spot. I mean, it was, it was impressive, too, because we talked about that Worcester team with all the talent. And uh, the big guys, and they were still feeding him down the post and the games, letting him kind yeah. of carry him to to win or loss, whatever was going to happen. Exactly, um, exactly. So yeah, that was that was surprising. I, I mean, I know his talent, like you said, I know he's talented. I know that, but the way they used him um, was probably did a lot for him to to grow as a player and you know, be much better for having this season because he did a lot to make the decisions down the stretch and and played unselfish when he needed to. Yeah, and I think that's what I was kind of alluding to a little bit with the tail situation in that when you've got those right guys around you, it allows you to come out into whoever you are, you know, yeah. to have the trust to pass the ball because you know it's going to be knocked down or, or you know you're going to get it back if you're in a better position. And, and I think coach, you know, got them in that position and, and obviously gave him that confidence to go ahead and do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I agree. I agree. He was definitely someone that when you we played him, you had to scout for you trying to, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to... Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, uh, Jalen Hayes, Hayes at Chester was, I thought, was a great guy. You know, I thought he rebounded mm -hmm. the ball well. He shot the ball. He was someone that could step out and shoot it. And, you know, but I just thought every now and again, he did rough it up. You know, some games, that's what's needed. You're going to have to just rough it up, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, well, as I thought, you know, as long as Jordan was in the mood, and, you know, that's the thing, as long as he's in the mood, you know, he's a problem, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we got... The big, the big boys. Yeah, well, big boys. You know, again, you know, we have some veterans in there. We got people across the league. You know, you got Rashad putting numbers up down at Plymouth. You got a, you know a whole bunch of guys. But I think, you know, if I'm not wrong, it comes down to two guys. You know, it, it, it comes down to Amir Williams and CJ Geddes. You know, I think you're right. <laughs> Thank you, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm scratching my head because they both gave us 30 points, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let me just go um, a step back, though. Um, <laughs> actually, sorry for the four. Where, where are we saying Ovi fits in this whole puzzle? For me, oh, is for he you, four or five. Where, where is he sitting? Well, you know, <laughs> oh, is he whatever he wants about, to be. <laughs> yeah, he, for us, he's wherever he wants to be. You know, I mean, yeah. this is a talented guy that you know can pass the ball, go coast to coast, dunk on you, play deep, do whatever he wants. You know. Um, I mean, we often started playing him at the five, yeah. you know, to be honest with you. And then um, when we brought Ali, big Ali two into the game, we'd move him to the four. And then sometimes we'd put Brandon and Ali and him out there. I mean, yeah. I was, we're trying to develop our way to put in some sort of zone on the floor <laughs> with those. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I meant to, I meant to um, throw out a couple names because I know, obviously, you know, we said, about anyone outside of your team, but Brandon as well, and Ovi, you got a lot of talent in that front court yeah, that I you're mean, juggling. That's it. You know, I mean, the thing is, the guys were comfortable. You know, they, they whatever I asked of them, they were prepared to do. 
um, I, I spent, you know, obviously Brandon's, this is Brandon's third year. He's been with us and I, I spent time, you, you know, we saw him as someone we could move along and actually eventually get him to the three spot. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously he shot the ball already brilliantly. If you see his yeah, ball handling, right. his ball handling is up the chart. Oh, yeah. Incredible ball. Well, you see, you, you know? see, you see glimpses. He's yeah. a very, uh, you know, keeps a game in a, in a box, you know, two, one, two dribbles, shot, <laughs> pump, break, rim. Like it's, it's very quick, uh, so you, but you can see it. You can see it's not, it's, it's not sloppy. He's got control of the ball and he's making. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and I think up until somewhere like January, maybe, I think he was shooting 56% from the three point line. You know, it, it was crazy. Um, so yeah, so he could flip flop, you know, but I like to do that. You know, in my, in my setups, I like to move guys around. Um, I don't like to box people in. It all depends on who we've got. You know, if we have someone like a curve in Bristol from the year before, okay, then he's going to be strictly five. But, you know, the minute we have some flexibility, like Corey Dixon or a, or a Brandon, you know, I like to move them out and see what we can yeah. do with them. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, you, I, I meant to make note of that because uh, you definitely had OV and Brandon. That was a, that was a tough one-two punch yeah. in that front court for you. Uh, very, very especially tough. Especially when Brandon was hitting those shots and OV's yeah. on that low block kicking it out, making plays out of, out of the paint. It's tough. Yeah. And I, I mean, and, and from a physical standpoint, I mean, OV is as tough as they get. <laughs> you know, I mean, when we're doing the team intros, everybody thinks we're all having a great time laughing. We're all trying to get out the way of OV so he doesn't knock us out as he's coming out. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so let's look at the fives now, all right? Let's jump to the fives and say... Yeah, so... CJ and... Let me CJ just throw a couple other Williams. people out there uh, before we get to that then. Henry from uh, Leicester. Yes. Now, there's a guy who does what he says on the tin. Mm -hmm. You know, he does what he says on the tin, and, and he just runs block to block. I think he's, he's, he's the best this season that I've seen at, at, at kind of leaning, you, leaning the big man out and getting the ball over the top. You yeah, know, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I, I think the game, one of the games they played up at Newcastle, he, everybody up there, it was just ridiculous, you know, beautiful footwork and, and hand movement, you know. And I didn't, I didn't get him in, he didn't get into my top two just because I just don't think he plays enough minutes. Right. He's also you know? underrated passer too. He can pass that. Very underrated for passer. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that 15 foot jumper, 15 to 18, mm -hmm. you know, he's exceptional, got all the tools. I just didn't think he played enough minutes, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, that's the makeup of Rob's type of teams because it's a, it's an equal opportunity situation. We're coming at you from all angles and we're going to guard you from all angles. So we understand how they play. Um, if he was on another team, he'd be only playing a bunch of minutes and, and those numbers would go up, you know. But in terms of footwork, in, in, in terms of mental understanding of the game, you know, he's right up there. You know, he's and, right and up there. And we also have to put in there... Um... Frazier, Ali Frazier from uh, Glasgow. Yeah, I think when yeah. he made those changes, his game really yeah. started to. Uh, from from the previous year to this year, he was he was uh, really really going into a special player this season. Night and day, night and day. And you look at players, and you said earlier on about players maturing and and stuff. And and I think that's just you know the nail on the head as far as he's concerned. Because when you watch Ali Frazier play now, it's it's like watching a professional dancer dance. Mm. You, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's over here. He's not tripping over his feet. He's not running into other people's spots. He's just boom, 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 boom. You know, obviously you have to give coach the credit for opening that space for him. But obviously Ali can shoot the ball. You know, beautiful, beautiful touch. You, you know. Yeah. I love he you finishes know, I, I, over all kind of contest. He, 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 consistent finisher. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's no, no, no two ways. And that's what I was saying. When you looked at all these spots, that's when you looked at that third, that three-man spot and you think, well, that's not at the level that we're at with some of the other spots on the team. Yeah, you know? usually that's one of our stronger spots, so it is. Yeah, it is, which is interesting, I, you know. We've noticed the league does just kind of, when it, recruitment kind of just goes and ebbs and flows, doesn't it? You, you see yeah. heavy in one spot, heavy in this spot, and a couple years later, that spot will be, so it's, it's, it's just... I mean, I think, I think, I mean, I guess, I mean, we do it. I'm sure all the coaches do it. It's like, oh, you know, oh, CJ Geddes now, how, how do we combat that? You know, so we all go off in this direction or, you know, Oh, another point guard. Oh, you're gonna get some, you know. And we kind of follow each other around, you know. <laughs> so sometimes I just, some, I just, just get more. I just tell Mike Tuck, make sure you have some milk this summer, do some push ups. <laughs> <laughs> well, geez, I don't know what you did. I once, I don't know what three or four or five games in a row you had him doing all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, I thought he was winding it down. We went to a party at the end of the season. <laughs> no, I mean, he's uh. He's the youngest 37-year-old you'll meet. He's, uh, <laughs> he's run for days, that guy. So Wow. Yeah, he's, my, he's my wrestler. He's the one I... 
<laughs> oh yes. Go wrestle that bear over there. Go wrestle. That bear. <laughs> yeah. But you know. Uh, so flashing back, we're saying um, Gettys and. Yeah, yeah, and I think the numbers really just in in this case the numbers say it all because you know they both run the floor. You know, you could say that um, you know Williams has maybe a little bit more further away from the basket uh, because in the game that we played against him, we dared him to shoot. You know, and he killed us in that 15 to 7, 17 foot range, which I didn't know he had. He hadn't showed that up until that game. Um, I thought, again, he was the kind of guy that was prepared to mix it up if that's what was required, um, which, again, you know, Kiedis can do just the same. Um, and, I mean, I mean, if you look at Williams' numbers, he's at 15 and 11 um, mm -hmm. across the season. Bearing in mind, there were some games he played only a few minutes, um, but he's shooting, uh, he's shooting 59% from the floor. Yeah. You know, and his block shots are, are a problem, you know. Yeah, yeah. But then when you look at Getty's yeah. numbers, then you go, oh, my goodness. He's 24 and 13, and he's shooting 68% from the floor. You know, now, you know, I don't know what you can do about that. There's really not a lot you can do about that. You know, that's a, that's a guy that's, that's giving it to you all night long. I, I missed you a little bit. I, I kind of froze up. Oh, just, okay. No, I was just giving you Getty's. Did you get Amir's numbers? Yeah, I got Amir's. I got Amir's. Okay. And Getty's, I said, was 24 and 13 and 68% from the floor. Mm. You know, 68%. Yeah, he, brought, he, he brought him to a whole other level when he, he came in this season. He, yeah. He definitely took all that pressure off for Ramon to do it by himself and, and feel, like he needed, feel like he needed to do it by himself. I don't know if he needed to, but I think down the stretch, he felt like he had to make all the plays. And then Getty's came and gave him someone to just dump it into and, and go to work. Absolutely. And I think, first of all, you got to give Geddes credit for getting himself in shape. Oh, yeah. Look great. You know, let's not make any mistake. But that, that's not something that happens overnight. That's a dedicated individual. Um, you know, Geddes today and Geddes two years ago is not the same mm -hmm. item, you know. Um, and I thought what he did really well, obviously, a lot of, you know, I'm not, I know how everybody plays slightly differently. But for us, we did try and put a lot of pressure on, uh, on Fletcher, try mm -hmm. and see what Geddes could come up with. And he read that very well, and he made sure he was around. We know, you know, Fletcher's as willing a passer as there is. Um, and he found him, and, and, and he had a terrific game against us, you know, in, in what I thought was a very, very good game between the two teams. Yeah, it always is between you guys. You've got a good little back and forth going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice rivalry going. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's look a little bit inward now. So what about on your own team? You had to give yourself uh, MVP for the Lions in the shortened season. How did you see it? Right, well, obviously that's always a tough one to give an MVP, especially if the coach is deciding. That's always a problem. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I mean, I thought, you know... We, I think for me, there's, there's, there's the three guys in the running there for me for MVP. I thought that, um, you know, overall, I, I, I love the effort that the returning players gave us in trying to maintain our culture. You know, Andre Lockhart, for instance, had probably one of his better seasons this year in the way he shot the ball, mm -hmm. took the mantle on and, and became really a, a, a vocal guy on the floor, which is not generally, you know, but he took on some serious responsibility. I thought Joe, you know, has anchored us so well. Um, people don't recognize what he does in practice, <clears throat> what he does with the guys, what the way he communicates. Um, his desire is always there, whether he's on the bench yelling and screaming for us or on the floor knocking down jumpers for us. You know, he th those two for me, th those two guys kept our culture going. Um, Brandon, we've talked about his skill set and, and everything else, and and when Brandon's shooting the ball well and, and moving and instinctive, he's as good as there is. You know, but I, I can't go any further than Justin. You know, it's very, very difficult to go anywhere else. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, it was a it was a huge job to to persuade him to come back from from abroad. Um, I think I'd been trying for two or three seasons beforehand to, to to finally get him home, and 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 all I could do was just keep telling him what my dream was, what we were trying to do, how we were trying to build within the circumstances, and and at some point he said, "Okay, I, I get you, and I I, I want to go on that journey." You know, and and we've had three years. And it's not funny that, that it's coincided with our best three years, you know, mm -hmm. top two the whole way through. Um, and just his desire, you know, like you say, he doesn't say much, but the desire is massive. And, and that quality practices, you know, quality practices. If you get quality practices, you can get good games. And as long as he's there with us, we're always having quality practices. So I have to give him the MVP for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's always nice when you have, I mean, you're, you're blessed in that sense, lucky in the sense that, 
that's a British guy you got. That's that's uh, your MVP, and and uh, he has that level headedness to to bring the intangibles, understand the points of practice, understand the points of preparation, and that's something that younger guys need to hopefully see as well. Coming through your structure, coming through our structure, they notice those guys because those are the guys that keep jobs and get jobs yes. and are highly employable. Yes. And I think players look sometimes at stats and numbers and and don't see those little small things and intangibles. And that's kind of what what I think misses in the game sometimes with the jumping around culture of jumping team to team because things aren't right and exactly. not understanding what it is that the coach wants to win is is sometimes falls through the gaps. I think. And I, I think what you're saying there, you know, about the, you know what the job needs, and and we have to emphasize this, and we're having this, having to emphasize this so much with our younger players, with our university players, with our academy players. You're trying to do a job, you know, and, and because it's a game we love, and and it's what we would do if we weren't working. Sometimes some guys don't get that, and I think yeah. that's the big thing to get across that this is your job, this is what feeds you and your family, this is what you got to do. Um, if I was trying to be a carpenter. You know, I'd, I'd get my apprentices and the guy would be teaching me some other stuff about joints and how to do this. And, I, and I'd be doing it because I know that's what I'm doing. And sometimes, you know, guys miss that. The, the game is entertaining and, 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 and highlights, you know, NBA, Euro League, Champions League, BBL, everything, you know. But it's a job, you know, and you have to come with that attitude. And that's what I love. And, and you know, you, I like to look around at some of the guys around the league to see the guys who do that. I mentioned Rashad earlier on. You know, I think that's a guy who goes about his business. You know, he goes about his business. He gets his lunch pail, off he goes, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's a lot of guys in the league. I mentioned Jamal Anderson earlier. That's a, a guy for you to look at from a, from a work ethic, you know. Um, I mentioned another guy, which would be a surprising guy, would be Lavelle Cook from, from Surrey. You know, this okay. is a guy that you were, I think you were with me when we spotted him in, uh, yeah. Yeah. in, in Vegas. And, you know, Lavelle Cook today and Lavelle Cook to now is a different kettle of fish. He's worked at his craft, you yeah. know. Um, and there's lots of guys around the league, you know. So when we see guys shining like a PJC, like a Fletcher, oh my goodness! And, you know, it's important people remember the work these young men have put in to 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 get in that stage. And that's why I was very pleased with the return of Nick Lewis because he showed that he hadn't disappeared and just sat in the corner watching movies. He'd mm -hmm. gone away to go and work on his game. Absolutely, we we spoke in the summer, and you know, I had Nick from when he first came to the country from yep. from Canada, at 18 or whatever it was, and. Uh, he went to you and then bounced around a bit, but he's definitely understands now the the holes in his game is nothing to do with his actual game. It's not <laughs> the shooting. It's not the dribbling. Yeah, it's the things yeah. that don't show up in the stat sheet. It's how you prepare yourself. Um, do I got you still? Yeah, I'm still here. You're frozen, but I'm still here. I hope you're not using Virgin Media, you know, Mr. Branson struggling. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. back now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got dial-up. It's got dial-up over here. <laughs> you're showing your age there. Careful. What's the dial-up? <laughs> but, yeah, we, he, he, he's understanding now it's not the skills that's that's keeping you, holding you back. It's it's the other bits, showing up, being professional, working hard, accepting roles, maybe not what you had envisioned for yourself for that yeah. game or that moment, but that's what's best for the team, and you have to humble yourself. And uh, you do that, it's only going to bring more and more opportunities for you. So he had a little bit of knock, I think, and and, and that's what basketball does to you. No one has it, a that's what it does. Goes you know? smooth sail, and everyone's been in the, in the wrong, wrong situation, didn't fit them, and they had to go somewhere else. So, um, and it's maturity. It's it's it's, uh, it's beautiful when you, you're able to see a kid like that start getting it, though. You know, absolutely. No, it's like, important. It's important. Man. So, who's your MVP then on this team? For this team, well, the guard core this year was uh, really. Band well together and grew with Mackie, Nick Lewis, and Connor uh, Cashaw. Um, Tuck always is the leader of the team, and he's always the one that kind of uh, shows. He's that work ethic, shows up every day, wants to be there, yeah. goes to the gym after. Um, and then Bennett uh, Cook, who came in, and he had a bit of a tough time. He started out really strong. Teams kind of beat him up and and and, and kind of adjusted. And then he had to adjust again. You could see he started getting back to his fifteen and ten and yeah. sixteen and eight, but um. You know, for this team, um, my MVP pro it has to be Mackie, yeah. Mackie McKnight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the way he leads, I think, uh, I, I, I like it. I like the way he, he he comes in a lot of similar things you say about Justin. Um, he knows what it takes to win. He, he brings some intensity to practice. He's getting in whoever's he playing against. He's, he's playing harder than the games maybe at times just to 
get that intensity there and he understands the moments and when he should and he speaks up when he needs to. Um, and then as he kept maturing and we got a little bit closer, it yep. even got better and better. And uh, I think that he's, he's got still so much more to grow in his game. I think offensively his package isn't showing yet. I think he just needs to keep working on that and, yeah. and not being scared to let that thing fly sometimes because I think he has more of offense package than he showed. But the other, <laughs> other bit is he, he, he knows what it takes to win. Yeah, no, I, I liked him a lot. I'm not surprised you've chosen him. I'm not surprised you've chosen him as the MVP there, you know. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry about yeah. that. I don't know what's going on yep. here. Um, That's okay. But, but um, yeah, so uh, so that's the players out the way and, and kind of looking at the league and next year. But um, so so you've been around longer than me as far as in, in basketball in the UK. You've had the successes. Like you said, you've had losses. You, you know everything in and out in Europe and, and well as the UK. What do you see for the BBL to get to the next level? Yeah, well, you know, that's that's uh, that's an interesting question. I think I think. The first thing I would say is, you know, the, the BBL, to some extent, and um, British basketball as a whole, gets a knock um, unfairly in so many areas. And I feel like we, i.e. the basketball community, sometimes are the worst, our, worst, our own worst enemies. You know, we don't appreciate what we have, you know, because we've just been trolling around the league here, looking at different players. Look at the quality of players that we've got here, you know. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, if we talk about London and we've had people like Brandon Peel and Justin Robinson and Ovi Soko playing here and blah, blah, blah. And we had the guys that we've had at Leicester over the years, you know, now Fletcher and Getty's appeared up in Newcastle. That's, that's, some, that's some talent on the floor. You know, that's some actual entertainment. And I know the guys who go to the games know they're seeing good stuff, you yeah. know. Um, so I'd encourage the British basketball community to get behind itself and, and I think start to support, you know. And if you've got some views or you've got something that you think you'd like to see, express it to your club, tell them. They want to hear every club I know. I mean, you know, we have a weekly, as you know, we have a weekly owner's call every, every week. And we talk about what can we do, what's better, what's this and what's that. And if people have some suggestions, you know, tell them, you know, tell somebody something. Um, but I think the biggest thing in, in, in trying to fight our way through that pecking order of what those other sports are is, is to build our stars, you know, is to build our own players and build our own stars and talk about them. You know, um, we, you know, here we've worked, you know, with someone like Joe, for instance, you know, he has a persona away from basketball. You know, he's known for what he does. He's no, you know, he's fun. Everybody knows he's a, he's a Batman fan. Everybody knows he's a Star Wars fan. And, you know, this is a guy just like anybody else, but he's one of our people. In, and, yeah. you know, we talk about him and, and Justin's moving in that direction too with some of the stuff that he wants to do. Um, and I think those are the kind of things. I mean, I've been, one of the highlights of me of, uh, of um, the, the quarantine is not only, firstly, the biggest highlight for a quarantine is how great the story scorches social media is. I think that's <laughs> awesome. Um, but the really great stuff is someone like Drew Laska, you know, coming out there and letting people get to know Drew Laska. You know, this is a guy who's committed to our game, been here for so long, you know, and, and he's out there. So, you know, I think this is the kind of stuff we should be promoting, you know, because, yeah, you know, I'm a Liverpool fan, so I'm mad about Mo Salah and I'm mad about you know, Sadio Mane, but I'm just as equally mad about Drew Laska and CJ Geddes. You know, I love to see them and see what they're doing and be excited by them. And I think we have to take pride in what we do. And, you know, I say that with two hats on, the basketball hat and the owner hat, because on the basketball hat, what I've just said, but from the owner hat, you know, yes, I've been around. I've been in some poor situations, you know, when I've been trying to grow the team from Hemel to Milton Keynes to London and blah, 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 where I was just grateful if a potential sponsor would talk to me. <laughs> He wouldn't give us anything. <laughs> he wouldn't give us anything, but he would talk to us, you know? And, and that's how we've always been. Oh, please, can you put something in our begging bowl? Please, can you put something in our begging bowl? And then we slowly moved along through the support of Greenwich Leisure to the Copper Box. And then we're in London. And now we've got some talent on the floor. So now I had to make a mental adjustment from keeping that begging bowl out there. So I'm going to meetings for significant deals. And I'm, you know, I'm saying to myself, actually, you know what? Hold it there. I'm not begging you for anything. You know, we have a product that's very, very good. We've got some exciting guys on the floor. We've got an audience in the building. The game's being televised free of charge on YouTube. Whether you like it or not, it's free to air. You know, if you want what we've got, come and talk to us. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a huge shift. I don't know if it's just me, because, you know, I don't know how all the other clubs work, obviously, because, you know, the downside of, you know, being your own guy 
as I've been for 30 odd years in the games, I don't get to experience your coaching session, Coach Paternostro's coaching session. I don't know what it's like, you know. Um, and by the same token, I don't know what they do in marketing from one club to another. But for me, that's been the biggest adjustment. And I think us as a sport need to turn that around and say, you know, we do have a product and we're going to be out there with our heads up high to, to battle out with confidence, not yeah. with the begging bowl. And that's a big adjustment, I think, mentally. Yeah, first off, my hat's off to you to, to even to juggle all that and take that on board and, and win a win a league and, and to, to, to push the business and push the club forward in London and juggling all that. I know my role alone is tough. I have Sarah and you're behind me that to take care of the things that most of the things you're discussing. I, I mean, I have input, but they're the ones that run that ship. So for you to do all that is uh, commendable and a lot of respect for me for that. Hey, well, it's just what I do. It's just, it's it's just what you have what to you do. do. Yeah, hey, if there's no club there, go build it. You know, there's you no gotta, team there. Go, I, go I want it. dinner on my plate. I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> the dog's got to eat, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think, um, you know, you got to set your price. You got to stick to it. You got to know what your yes. worth is and you got to know your value. Yeah. And yeah. in business, that's sometimes when, like, we're under the gun and we, we're kind of beholden sometimes to get those sponsors. It's easy to want to tempt them to just go, okay, give me half. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to set your price. You have to be, be proud of your you product do. and you have to stick with it. You do. And that mentality to me is the biggest thing I think we need to change. You know, I mean, yes, there's lots of other things we could be doing, you know, which are all valuable, good stuff. But it starts with that attitude, you know, and, and, and actually it's, for us, it's worked. You know, it took us a long time to get going in London, but it, it's worked. Now, you know, people are queuing up to talk to us. You know, uh, and, and, and if they're coming with the right attitude and what we want, we'll, we'll talk to them. And, and if not, we'll move to the next guy who wants the same thing, you know. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's exciting. I've been in the BBL just over 10, 10 years, 11 years now. Um, and I've seen the growth. Cause I think when I first came was probably one of the, the more the downturn side of yes. where you've yeah. been. Um, yeah. And I'm seeing the, the, the the trend going up and I'm seeing the different mindset. I'm seeing that change and it's not overnight, but I've been seeing it slowly growing. And, and what you're saying, you, you can see it around the corner. People are starting to understand that about themselves. We have a valuable product. It's not horrible. It competes with other, with other products with the right investments and, and belief in it. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I mean, oh, everybody's about, oh, this in Europe and that is in Europe. You know, I have a philosophy, man. They're lying, you know, they're <laughs> lying because... <laughs> I've been to some practices in Europe. I've talked to some of the British players who come back from Europe. I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah, what's happening? Well, you know, this, well, that. I'm like, well, I thought it was heaven. You know, yeah. they're sleeping on somebody's couch. They're moving here, this and that. Hey, you know, we all have our issues, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it was unfortunate in terms of, you know, when, um, when Leicester went into Europe and some of those kind of results that they had in there, there was, I mean, I watched three or four games. I was almost crying for Leicester. I can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah. You know, when they lost a couple of games by one and some guy who hadn't hit a three-point shot all season suddenly hits three in a row to win the team the game by one. I felt sorry sorry for Russell Levinson and for, and for Pat Nostro. And I'm thinking, we can compete against these guys. We need to get out there and stop running ourselves down, man. Let's get out yeah. there and do something. And, and the thing is with Europe, people always, I've been, I was out there a bit before here and uh, they think the top, what, 16 teams in EuroLeague is Europe. You know, they play in leagues. <laughs> With 15 <laughs> other teams you never heard of, and you wouldn't go and wouldn't play there <laughs> if you got the opportunity. There's a lot, you know, they think every team is uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv, but <laughs> NBA size contracts. And Lovely. Every, every league has its plus and minuses. Every league has, you know, teams that are, you know, not as strong or, or wealthy as other teams. And that's just how it is, just like football here. It's a different scale, but it's exactly some teams that's it's not Man City top and bottom. Um, yeah. yeah. So th that's the reality of it. <laughs> very good <laughs> Flip, flipping a little more you know before we get out of here just some some personal uh things is have you been watching that um that documentary on netflix with the the, the jordan that that bulls team man have i been watching what are you talking about have you been watching <laughs> yesterday somebody uh i think yeah kofi josephs is my favorite guy i follow on twitter now so he's okay. like yeah i gotta watch all eight episodes i'm thinking all eight episodes i'm trying to stretch it out yeah. <laughs> i don't want to rush it all in one go you know, um, but, um, oh, my goodness, it's amazing to see, isn't it? It is. It is. You know? It is. It is. Just amazing to see. I mean, how about for you, from you and, and myself to a point as far as, like, saying the owner's perspective as well, for me, is very interesting in seeing those decisions. I know. And, I know. And, I know. Um, you know, the the humbleness you have to have sometimes to be an owner and, and to deal with players because 
the way they were talking to some of those, oh, you're thinking, I'm surprised they didn't break them up a long time ago when they're clowning them. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, I mean, I, yes, I do have to do that because I have to coach the guys, you know, I mean, charge their contracts, you know, I have to find the guys to, to bring them here in the first place. And it's, it's tough. You know, I mean, I, it's 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 a difficult situation there, and and, and it's, you know, it's difficult as we can see on the documentary when they're individual people, and you're talking about millions of dollars, and you're talking about the best people on earth, you know, for those roles, it's a tough one, and you know, I've I've had some difficulties with that along the way. We can't pretend everything's smooth sailing, you know. No. Um, I've had some guys that I brought in here thinking that would work, they didn't work. I've had some guys that I've had to cut. I've had some guys that I've gotten on really well with, but there's no way forward. Um, and and it's and then you still got to get on the floor and you still got to coach, you know. And um, it's tough, it's tough. But it's really good to see that it's not just us. It's good to see that, yeah. you know, because I, I don't know. There was one time when I think it was the, the clip yesterday when uh, without giving anything away to the guys who haven't watched it, but the clip yesterday where I think they beat in Detroit and they're all goofing around in the uh, in the plane on the way home, <laughs> and then you have that, and then whereas later on when he's causing the issues with Pippen and everything else, and they're just insulting the guy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Um, wow. It's, it's amazing <laughs> to see, you know. And I was thinking about um, um, having, having Phil Jackson on the bench with Doug Collins for the two, you know, for the two yeah. years leading up. Not only that, you ban Tex Winter to the side and the two of them are making, no, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. That must have been <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, so off that note, though, who, who was your basketball idols when you, when you were younger? Who was, who was someone that you... You look back on and say that that's a uh, sure. inspirational. Well, I mean, you know, my my number one and, and all is, uh, inspiration is Jimmy Rogers. Um, okay. First of all, you know, uh, rest his soul. Um, because Jimmy brought me into the game. Uh, I just, can't, I mean, it was it was without going into too much detail, it was an odd situation that I ended up playing basketball. I was leaving school in uh, Liverpool, just jumping out of the window, leaving class early, <laughs> as you do as a sixteen year old, and. Um, uh, somebody grabbed me and said, oh, you got to come and play this game. I'm like, well, no, I'm rushing home. Man. No, no, you got to play this game. We've we got a school game. We've only got four players. It's basketball. We need a fifth. We can't start the game. I'm not, I've never played basketball before. I don't know what you're talking about. No, you, at least start the game and then we can worry about it afterwards. So I went down there. They showed me what to do, put it in the square, blah, blah, blah. And we play in the game. And I noticed <clears throat> throughout the game, this guy walking around the court with a hat on, you know. Anyway, at the end of the game, we won the game. The guy came over to me and said, hey, young fella, you know, as he does in his deep voice, um, I haven't seen you before. Where are you from? I said, I'm not from here. I'm from Africa. I just came in from Africa, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, what, you don't play basketball? You know, I said, no, this is my first game. He said, no, that can't be right. I said, no, this is my first game. He said, well, do you want to come to practice? I said, yeah, sure. So we went to practice that week. And from then till now, I'm still playing this bloody game. <laughs> you know? That's <Yes>, amazing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and all the stories he told us and how, you know, you know, Jimmy was the first black guy to play on the England team. Uh, he wanted to learn to dunk. He was in the army. He used, to, he used to have a mirror above his door. And mm -hmm. he used to jump to try and catch his eyes in the mirror. And as soon as he saw his eyes in the mirror, he moved that mirror higher up. And <laughs> up he went. <laughs> so many stories Jimmy would fill you up with. But, you know, he's my number one inspiration for the game. But from a playing perspective, then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was, mm -hmm. for me, someone I, I really related to. Um, and then, of course, until I met Michael, jo uh, Michael Jordan, uh, which we were fortunate to do in Brixton, um, and right. what he achieved uh, is amazing. So for me, those those are my three. <laughs> what about okay. you? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Um, I, I gotta I go back to to when I was first playing. Was I'm from Brooklyn originally, and uh, I got three older brothers. But um, it was that time you, I couldn't go outside, go to the park, so I had to cut the laundry basket out the bottom, shooting socks, <laughs> 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 shooting socks. My brothers at school, I'm like three, four. Um, watching the Knicks on the black and white, you know. Um, so my, my first inspiration would be my brother uh, Devin, who's who's uh, seven years older than me. When I watched, and he was he was okay. Jordan to me at the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, he was tough, and you know would would just split his thumb open and play through it. Oof. And just all kinds of stuff. So you know that grit, that like that desire yep. to win. Yeah, definitely got that from him. Uh, my high school coach who. who told me I could play college. I didn't think I could play college. I had no, I didn't do AAU. I was just kind of like, this is, I'm good at it. I like, I, I can go to my park. I'm the best player at my park and all that stuff. <laughs> and he was like, you know, you could play college. I'm like, man, college is for like, that's back when it was like college was 
dude. Yeah, the thing. It, yes, was, it was yes. like, man, I can't play that. That was like superstars. <laughs> wow. And he and he, he paid for me to go to a camp because uh, I was in Florida at the time in Alabama. He oh no, so to Atlanta. Um, and he drove me over the weekend to my first like exposure camp to get a to get a scholarship. And uh, wow. I got a letter from uh, University of Mobile. I'm like, Ma, we made it. <laughs> you don't gotta work no more. <laughs> I'm <in> college. <laughs> I'm going to college. <laughs> wow. And then uh, wow. professionally, I, I always liked like Isaiah Thomas was my, it's probably my first, because I, I was the youngest of four. So I always felt like I was right. a point guard. I was the right. little guy. The small one, so the, yeah. Yeah, so I, I liked Jordan, but my brother was Jordan. I liked Barkley. <laughs> my other brother was Barkley, so I was Isaiah. <laughs> I was the one that set him up so we could go to, the, you know, all that stuff. So so those are probably my, my wow. um, idols as a kid, yeah. So I, when when you were at college, at what point did the thoughts of playing pro come along? Did you was there something happen? How, how did you, what what happened there? Yeah, I was uh, I was um, doing job interviews. I didn't know about what was <laughs> Like uh -huh. really, all this is not planned. I'll tell you that <laughs> I played hard and I always played like to win out of my mind. It was best for the team. That was just how I played. I didn't do it thinking next level. I just did that. Sure. And, uh, when I was um, finishing my year up, and one of my, my roommates, he was dating a girl that ended up playing in England. Wow. Right? He was, uh, um, and he, I was in the gym working out, just working out. He's like, you, yeah, I just came, you know you can play over there, right? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I want you to play boss. I went to a game. I saw the guys play. You can play over there. I'm like, nah, I can't play over there. He's like, you can. So I'm like, all right, I'll check it out. Wow. And, uh, I got um I got a letter or something from uh in the mail because I was all conference or whatever from uh you might know the name he was from England actually Silas Chang oh yes he did a camp in Atlantic yes, City yes that's right yep so wow I, I, that's I, going back yes yeah so I just hopped in the car my I brought, got my brother to come up we went in the car and I played and then got some offers and I was like oh shoot sure, I could. Damn. Yeah, like, <laughs> you don't gotta tell me twice. No, no, <laughs> that's it. That's something. what I said. I'm like, let me see. You know? I'll try it. Check it out. But um, I, I'll be lying if I knew about it. I didn't know. No, and I, I, that's I was... interesting because you know, I, I feel like you're kind of like a halfway between the guys who are here today, where everything's on your phone, mm -hmm. and then if you go back to guys like, you know, we've just been doing some stuff on the whole old, old lion stuff with the Royals, with like Joe Pace and Daryl Thomas, who won an NCAA championship with Bobby Knight. You know, mm -hmm. they would have finished college and it's like, well, let's twiddle our thumbs because there's no connection to anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, whereas I guess things were a little bit more fluid, fluid at that point when you were coming through. I'm just interested to know because sometimes, you know, I, I try to say, when I talk to younger players, it's like, oh, yeah, I want to go to college. I want, I want to go do it. Like, well, why? Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, what's the goal? You know, and sometimes they forget. I just wanted a job. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, it. let me go to college and get a job. That's it. That's why, you know, I, I didn't think I could do that. So I was, job was done at 21. Um, I didn't know I'd be here so far over. Um, still, still, wow. still doing it. Uh, I'm, there I'm you blessed go. And you see? for that. Absolutely. Definitely. We all are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one more uh, kind of cap it off and, and is this this great conversation. I appreciate again you doing this. But um, if you had really to, good. you know, you're writing your book, you're writing your autobiography. What's the, what's, how's the pinnacle look of your career? How's the pinnacle look? You mean so far or to becoming or what to become? What, what, what would be your ideal pinnacle of your, of, of your career? Well, you know, it's funny. It's a, it's a difficult one. I, I, you know, I only started off just by playing, you know, I, mm. <laughs> you know, I was just playing and I was playing in Liverpool and, and I was playing in London with, with Camden and Hampstead. Then I was playing with Brixton and I was playing with Tower Hamlets. Then we set up our first club, the London Docklands, playing at the Docklands Arena in the BBL. Uh, and then we ended up having to sell that club to, to the London Towers people. And I didn't want to sell because I was, I was getting excited. You know, back then, talking about internet and no internet, you know, we used to watch um, college games and NBA games rather on Pontel. So we used to have some guy in Germany send us video tapes in the mail. <laughs> That's how we used to watch games, you know. And then, I, and then I, it was around the time around the time that Akim Olajuwon went to college, okay. you know, Akim Olajuwon was a kid when, you know, when we used to go around in, in Nigeria, he was just a kid and we never let him get onto the court, <laughs> you know, because right. he was just a young kid. So when he got to, to Houston, we were excited to follow him. And, and that's how we got into college. And it happened to be 
you know, that time where you're playing with Ralph Sampson and Patrick Ewing and, and college basketball was unbelievable, you know? And so hold on, I, that's crazy. You knew you knew Elijah would be from, from Nigeria. Yeah, as a kid, yeah, oh, absolutely. Crazy. You know, I, as, as a kid, you know, I used to sit down because obviously once we started playing and I used to go back and forth to see my family, we'd be playing out in the park in, in Nigeria and he'd be there getting water for us, you know? Like, yeah, can I play, <laughs> Uncle? Can I play? No, no, get us some water. We yeah, play, you're too small, you know. And then look at him now or then, you know. But um you know, so the college thing really got me and the whole, so I used to end up, because of these tapes, we used to end up watching the Big East all the time, mm. you know, St. John's, you know. Um, power conference back in the day. Yeah, you know, the Mulberry Bush with, with, you know, Billy Singleton played on that team before he mm. came here and all this stuff. So I had this vision that, you know, you know what, if I had a club that was half pro and half college, where the community bought into everything you were doing, you know, and, and, and you could really create this, you know, really interspersed situation. And that's what I had in my mind. So I didn't want to sell the club to Towers. So I went on and took on Hemel. And I thought, well, okay, let's try and do that there. And it couldn't work there. Then we got to Milton Keynes. And actually we were starting to build that in Milton Keynes. It was amazing. We had a huge junior program. You know, the, the guys were stars in Milton Keynes on the radio, mm -hmm. everywhere, you know, so we're building that scenario. So that's what I've always wanted to build, mm -hmm. you know? So <clears throat> for me, in terms of what, what the pinnacle looks like, I've never had this aim to go and get something, you know, but obviously, uh, you know, and I've, and I've had many coaches. When you talk about the coaches hat versus the owner's hat, I've had many coaches coach for me, you know, um, but I felt like I was able to add more to that coaching perspective, you know, and, and that's what I've been doing. So the success we've had, you know, I felt like I think we can become more consistent, you know, so one mm -hmm. of the, the two out of two things I'd say, one of them was that, you know, can we be more consistent in London? Can we can we have a trophy cabinet that looks like that of Newcastle or looks like that of, of Leicester and just shows consistency and brings kids through the program? You know, bringing through the kids through the program is, is one of the big things for me. You know, I'm very proud of people like Jordan Spencer, you know, Chris Taiwa and people like this that we brought from, from eight years old right through the program, you know, Connor Washington, all these guys. And I think in London with the talent, you know, we can probably do something like that even bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of my goals is to be consistent across that, that picture. But then, you know, we've all got this burning ambition. We mentioned it earlier about going into Europe and what mm -hmm. that means. You know, I went to see the games at Brighton when Coach Nick Nurse was, was coaching Randy Duck and the guys against the Lithuanian team that they beat and stuff like that. And I have this thing now where I want to show that British basketball is, can be at that level. Mm -hmm. um, so the pinnacle is somewhere in, in around there of that consistency and being able to be a team that wins games in Europe. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, that's, that's, uh... That's good. That's commendable. I mean, I think uh, I think you'll get there. <laughs> I think you'll get there. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coach, come and play. Come and play. Yeah, I see you guarding those guys. What a defensive behemoth. <laughs> what about you? You've been here a while now. You've had, yeah. you know, you've been here a while. You're in one of the greatest franchises. I think um, similar to you, I, I haven't, I never really had a plan for this all, the, how it went. You know, I've, I've kind of just went with with the flow of things and, and took opportunities and did my best in them and opened more opportunities. And it's got me to where I'm in a position where I'm not too dissimilar from yourself in the sense of I do have ownership of the club that I'm coaching. So I think for me, what you're saying aligns a lot with how I see things of wanting to build a bigger uh, element of the club that's more than just performance, but the total picture. And, yes. and you know, I, I don't have um, as many guys going through the system yet. I'm still working on, on building all those numbers up and, but someone like uh, Nick Lewis, who's went away and come back, I feel like yeah. he's come through the Sharks system as far as coming in at 18. And, and we've got different guys that that are, are in our structure now that are highly talented, I hope can continue to grow and come through. But um, for me, I think the pinnacle, I don't see it any differently than you in the sense of to go to Europe, but I'd love it to be in our own arena. I'd love yeah. Sheffield to have his own arena. I feel like that's important for it. For us as a club, and I think the league as a whole, if more teams like Leicester Newcastle have an arena where the, the business stacks up more with an asset. Um, Absolutely. And then <laughs> I you mean, can compete a lot more comfortably with those European clubs without overstretching yourself. Yes, um, yes. Uh, that's a big thing. That, I mean, I think yeah, you, can see, you can see it in, 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 in the way Leicester has, has continued to grow and, and, and Newcastle expanding. And, and from a business standpoint, that's clearly a huge thing. I mean, going to, we've played some friendly games in Europe in Poland, in, in, in Belgium, and, and you see there, they already know, you know, next season, we know we got our arena because it's ours. We know we got this amount of sponsorship from the council because that's what they do. We know we don't have yeah. to worry about accommodate, you know, all these things that they have put upon yeah. them already, 
which, you know, I mean, I don't know if sometimes maybe people don't realize that every BBL club has to raise the first penny before you can spend the first penny, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is a challenge. So, but yeah, I think, uh, but you know, Sheffield is, is one of those cities, you know, sports is huge. Yeah, it is. You it's, know? it's a lot of it's it's a lot of a lot of talent. Big sports clubs here. We have hockey, football, um, and numerous other little things here and there. And, but uh, I think for us, we have a we have a lot of talent that we need to just kind of keep working to bring in into the fold. And and you know, I really want to get my hands and be around the summers to develop and and see them grow. And like you said, the names you name, I want to name more names for coming from Sheffield. Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge. I mean, a lot of the young kids we talk to now, I'm going to the NBA or I'm going to college. It's a, it's a challenge to let them believe, you know, one of the earlier questions you asked me about what the BBL could do. I think we need to show the youngsters that there is a, there is a job opportunity here for them. Mm -hmm. That's not to be sneezed at, you know, I, I, um, you know, young fella Kane Henry over in college in the States. I'd love to have kept him here for, for, for the whole four years and given him a job, you know, but he, we wanted that experience. I mean, even Spencer and obviously with Spencer, you know, we're very close with Spencer. And he played on that team for us in uh, the All English team at Crystal Palace that qualified for the playoffs. Um, and I asked him, you know, I looked in his eyes and I said, "Well, what do you want to do?" And so I really want the college life. I really want the college life, coach. So we supported him to do that, you know, and, and encouraged him. Um, um, and I just think that you know people should look at that and look at other possibilities for their goals of what they want out of what they're actually doing. And I think if it's about getting better at basketball and getting a job, a long long term job, you know, because if you look at some of the guys who've been at clubs, look at um, Darius Defoe, you know, yes. I, I mean, you know, a long, long career, you know, of, of good, solid situation. Um, you know, Gareth Murray, we talked about earlier, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, it's Nigel Lloyd that, that told me about this because Nigel played around the time when the game looked good, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in the arenas with the big money guys and all this kind of stuff. And, and guys were flying to the States, yeah, sorry, to, to Europe very quickly, getting their passports, you know, John White, uh, Terrell Myers, all of these guys, oh, yeah, 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 you know. And I said to Nigel, you're not going? He's like, no, no, if I get, if I go, I, I know I'll be back in three or four years. If I stay here, I know I'll have a 15 year career. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay. And he was dead on right. Mm -hmm. You know, he was dead on right. Well, that's kind of, when I was playing, I could have, could have bounced around a little more playing your point or two, but I came to she Sheffield and I saw it, it was, it, I've been out there. I knew what it's like. It's not as glitz and glamorous and, and even when you talk about America, obviously that was just something I came through being from America. Yeah. But when you're over here and you see an 18-year-old kid and they want to go, or 19, whatever, they want to go to America to develop. I'm like, what you're playing against men and, and more talented guys, unless you're going to a yeah. big program, you're not going to get no. developed faster. You might no. get, you know, you might get a parties you might go get you know <laughs> you might have some different elements of that if that's what you mean if yeah you're talking about basketball wise and that's all you then, then no it's just i agree with you 100 you know, know top 25 kind of uh team in, a, in, a, in america um the development in the bbl is 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 better to me than the US. i agree i agree and i think uh, you can just but you can i don't it's not what i think you can see a lot of guys who come back from the states they're no better than when they left yeah you know, but they're yeah. just four years behind because some other guys have come on board and, you know, started off on the bench and worked their way through. Yeah. You know, definitely. it's an interesting one. <laughs> it is. But all right. Um, thanks again for this call. It's just in this, this time. I hope you enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. We, we can maybe do this another time. Hopefully not. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be out and about coaching soon. We ain't going to be stuck in the house. We can get the gym again and do what we love to do. Let's hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, man. Can't eat any more food. <laughs> what Netflix do you want now? Said the fridge. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking to you, and um, best of luck, everything. All right, teams, and to you. Thank you so much. It's a great, okay. a great idea to do this. No problem, man. Good talking to you. All right, stay All safe. Right. You too. All right, teams, and to you. Thank you so much. It's a great, a great idea to do this. No problem, man. Good talking to you. All right. Stay safe. You too.